We're ready? No, I pressed the button. Not Wait. yet? Now. Go ahead. Now. now. Okay, beep, now. Beep, beep. Is it now? Are we now? Yeah, yeah, we're now. All right. We should be ha now. Happy holidays, everybody. No matter what kind of holiday you're celebrating. Um, John and I felt like, you know, this is our regular Monday. We would normally do a, a sh uh, YouTube show. And a lot of people may not be here because they're celebrating with family and friends. And then there's an awful lot of people who are home alone during the holidays. And my daughter, Cinnamon, I don't know, when she was on earlier, she was feeling really sick today, sore throat. Had, um, I think she got chilled yesterday out in the rain giving away um, um, art supplies art supplies to at that church to, to kids who didn't have Christmas presents. And so she and John did that, John Cooney and her. So uh, I don't know. She When I talked to her this morning, uh, she was not feeling well. So if you missed Cinnamon, or if it was short, did she go on? Do we know? I, anyway, I don't know. I was busy setting up. Painting. We're going to be painting a, a beagle today. And uh, one of the things I like to emphasize, I, I see a lot of people doing dog paintings. And I would say that the so many of our um, of our artists, that particularly on, on, in the academy and on our Facebook artists, they do very well painting dogs. They really do. And what they'll do is they'll start a dog, send it in for being a personal art coaching. We'll get it all in ship shape, or sometimes sometimes they don't even need to do that. But nonetheless, uh, not so much cats. People don't seem to want to paint a cat, but boy, something happens to that dog, and they want a painting of it. Um, so anyhow, we're going, well, that's painting, important thing. we're going to be painting a dog today because I think you've got to take it away from the photograph and turn it into art and understand how to make a painting. They already have a photograph, even if it's a crummy one, okay? So we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about all the paintings I've been doing all week long and uh, in the last week and uh, for our story time. I was very tempted to make this a story time painting if not a lot of people came, but then I thought, well, it's Christmas. We're going to have this traceable up for anybody that, um, for uh, green and orange members and above. So even if you're not an orange member, we'll have the traceable up for this dog for you. Okay, that's sort of. This our is a freebie. It's our Christmas present to the world. Uh, to the world, we'll make it. And I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible, and try to explain a lot while I'm doing it, so that um, y you really get it. Because there's just certain things that have to happen and one of the things I like to do first is I have an outline of this dog and I would say to you I'm not going to do it but I would say uh, it's on a blue background I would I would have uh, given that a coat of matte varnish just to spray it to, so you didn't lose your lines you know that would be one thing the other thing you might want to do is uh, have some um, do a uh, traceable on a piece of clear plastic, okay? Um, you, you can, this is called Mylar film. It's in our store on Amazon. And what you do is you, oh, as you're painting it, you place it over the dog like this, see? Line up the eyes. Do I have it backwards? Yeah, okay. Well, that would, that would not work. So you line up the eyes and you see if, you, if you're off. Because it's very easy to get off. And then you can double check as you're painting. You dry it and put your your clear um, acetate on top. And that's really a great trick. My friend King, Kim Carr came up with this. And I, I thought, man, this is brilliant. This is really good for portraits and animals. You know, it doesn't matter so much about a tree. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, if your tree is slightly different than another tree, you know, you know kind of like snowflakes and other trees. But eyes kind of make, they got to be in the right place. The head has to be in the right place. And that's the biggest mistake I see. Well, one of them. I see. You know, I think that, you know, maybe we ought to call this, John, the tutorial on this, the mistakes people make when they're painting dogs. We could and, do that. And, and, and one of the big mistakes is, number one, is getting the eyes off. And you can just stop that immediately by, you know, having this clear acetate using a Sharpie and then being able to lay it on top of your painting as time goes on. All right? So I want to tell you what the palette is going to be. It's ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, and only because uh, I have a lot of that and I'm going to use it up. <laughs> and then uh, thalo blue, uh, burnt umber, raw umber, um, burnt sienna, uh, raw sienna, yellow oxide or ochre, cad yellow medium, orange, cad red, and also I'm going to use a Payne's gray. 
<laughs> in a minute. I will be using Payne's Gray, which I didn't put out, and I'm not sure. I got distracted, you know, but I was going to put it out. And there's so titanium that, white at the bottom. So I'll put that right there. All right, so tucking that in. So as I'm wishing you all a, a very happy holiday, regardless of the holiday you're celebrating, who's our mods today, John? Any, we, we any, any mods? No mods showed come? up today. Nope. We've got moderator Liz, Judy, Tech Liz, Steffi. I think that's it. Let me just go to the participants as where I can find them. Yep. Those well, four. we appreciate you guys showing up, and you know, and, and thanks very much. You know, we your support throughout the year has been outstandingly helpful to us. So we appreciate that very much. As we're talking, one of the first things I'm going to do is just take a small brush and some. Um, uh, oh, let's see. What are we going to do here? I think I'm, I, I think I don't want to lose my outline of the dog, so I'm going to take some raw sienna and some. Let's try ultramarine blue. I'm going to come up here like this. Just to. That's not the final color, but I'm going to just say that if I do that, then I just don't want to get any higher on the dog than this. So if I do that. Um, a little bit of white, maybe. Um, if I come along here like that, now I know that this is my kind of my border. Dog can't go past this, yeah. There he is. She's sort of stuck there, right? And if I come under his feet with a little bit of ultramarine blue here, um, then I'm not going to lose this foot shape, which really makes the painting. This shape of this foot really makes it. A lot of times you see people and they'll do pet portraits and the first thing they do is, is fudge the paws. You know, there's sort of a paw, but you can kind of tell it's there. But um, that's one of the things that to have a, to be able to take your own pictures, and that's not always possible if you're being asked to do a portrait, is of, because a lot of times by the time they get around to asking you to do it, the dog has already passed. And so you're relying on what I consider pretty crummy photos most of the time that you're kind of st stuck working with. So you may have to Google that breed of dog and find some positions and find the rest of the references. That's what people don't do is they don't, they rely on some horrible reference and they don't find the rest of it. Make sense? So there is, a, there should be a reference, uh, some other reference, but they're not finding it. So um, you can see where I'm sort of kind of I want to keep this shape in and the easiest way to do that is to do it before I start losing it um, so that's one of the things so make sure that you you don't necessarily outline it just do it with a little color you know you've got some color over here so um, just consider doing that with a little color like that because you know that um, this is some cerulean blue right here, white. Oh. Cerulean is an interesting color. It's kind of expensive. I ended up with it because one one year Jerry's Ar Artorama, the manager there, George Rodriguez, gave me all the blues, and that's where if you may have seen that video we did on YouTube, Adventures in Blue, and I just wanted to see all the blues they had and which ones I'd absolutely have to buy. And I pretty much decided the blues I personally buy are ultramarine blue, uh, red shade, and thalo blue, green shade. Those are the, the main colors that I buy. And because um, I can mix almost any blue from those. Though blue is one of your primaries, so it could be argued that I can't. Raw umber with this. Um, raw umber will, you know, acrylics tend to be um, it's, they have a tendency to be bright, and if you add a little bit of raw umber to the uh, the paint, just a tiny bit, like one or two percent, you'll age the color, and that and it kind of can give it an, an antique look. Um, in fact, years ago, there was a you know, the craft stores for a while were doing something called decoupage. I think you said your wife did that, right, John? Oh, yeah, I remember decoupage. And one so. of the kits they had was um, 
some oil painting raw umber, and after you did your decoupage with your with your news, you know, your picture that you'd cut out of a magazine, and then you'd glued it on the box, and then you'd you'd put this stuff on and call, cause it all to crackle and look old, and then you would put this um, um, this raw umber on it, an oil painting, and just kind of with a cloth, just rub it over. You'd be like you'd be like staining it. Yeah, stain it, and it would age it. It would go into the cracks and make it look all antique. But you can do that just on your own with them. Um, um, just with uh, uh, just, just just adding a tiny bit of raw umber to the paint, and then if there's something center of interest and you want something to stand out, leave it out of the color. Put it on, use it like what we call a mother color, and um, and do that. Okay, so you see how I'm. I'm not allowing for any hard edges on here. Everything's just sort of one edge is sort of blending into another, even though I'll I'll paint over that. So now that I've I've done that, I can take a larger brush and um, uh, let's see a little bit of paint gray and a little yellow oxide here. Okay, so I'm going to come over here like that. This is a little bit of the uh, raw sienna white and a little bit of paint gray. Probably should put a little raw umber in that too. That kind of can age stuff a little bit. A little bit of. The thing is, you don't want gobs of paint on here. All right. But you are just, we are just going to sort of get this background uh, first layer in. And just a little bit of raw umber, and oh, uh, that was burn umber. That's what happened. Okay, I'll try to get in the right place on the canvas here. Okay, a little bit of white up here, a little bit of blue. A touch of this, a touch of that. Yeah, just right now, I'm just kind of getting this. Remember, I just wanted the dog outlined enough so I didn't lose him, and um, and I didn't lose his shape. And so now I've got. Got the dog in here. Uh, you know we, we're not gonna we're not gonna lose the um, the image. Okay, so that's what we want to try not to do. There we go, and I'll we'll just get some more of this color in here. And as I go, I'll just keep adding more color and more layer of the blues. Upon layer. Just keep adding a few layers. All right, so now would be, this is where you would just take a moment and, um, and dry, but before I do that, I'm gonna just uh, take a little bit of a, a little bit of a white right here and then pull it up next to his back. Because his back's gonna be almost black, it's black. So I'm gonna just now There we go. All right, so the brush goes in water. Just take a second. We're going to take a second and dry. John, perhaps you could read some questions from people. And read I can some draw, questions. I'll draw, you know, read them out to yourself and then tell me what they are. Okay. There we go. I switched systems. We have to use two different microphones. That's why we had a, um, an echo. We're still fighting the microphone situation. Is the dog on a blue blanket? Yes, he is. Well, a blue couch is what he's really on. He's on a blue couch. I uh, really appreciate everybody joining us today on a special holiday. I know we may have interrupted your plans, but what the heck. That's the kind of people we are. Uh, we want to remind everybody this is the last week that we are offering the special deal with yearly memberships of getting a original painting from Ginger depending upon uh, if you sign up, you know, you'll depend on what size you get, depending upon what, uh, how long you go and what color. Let me switch mics back. Questions? No, there's no questions, boss. 
Okay, so well, okay, so there was a question. Is a dog on a blue blanket? I said, no, it's on a blue couch. Mm. Is he on a blue couch? Well, you can tell from the way his position is because the gravity is feet, leg are going down, right? But anyway, well, he's, yeah, he's hanging. I don't something. think it really matters either way, do you? I do. I want him on a blue couch. Absolutely, it's a blue couch. This is orange. Just cab uh, oh, the orange from. Um, um, uh, Does anybody have a beagle in the audience? Does anybody that's watching us have a beagle? One Curious. of my Boy Scouts had a beagle. Yeah, but I want to know if anybody watching us had a beagle. Well, I don't know. Cinnamon and John, when they were first married... They had a beagle? Well, their roommate had a beagle. Now, they got, they got married, and, um, and they, found, they rented a house, and the first thing they did was invite John's best friend from high school to... Sh to sh share, there was a three-bedroom house, so they, in order to afford it, they needed a roommate. So um, uh, this other kid moved in with his beagle, and Cinnamon and John had a had a parrot, and um, the beagle would um, was a very fat beagle, and the parrot would um, t you know take its food and drop it down to the beagle, who would happily eat it. Seriously. <clears throat> dog got very fat. The parrot just loved the fact that the dog was eating all, you know, <laughs> the parrot was feeding the dog. I think that's, I don't know about you, but I think that's adorable. Bird looking after dog. Yeah, that's, you know, you just never know about, you know, animals and what they do. So uh, anyway, uh, so right now I'm just, you'd think it was a paint by number the way I'm doing this, but um, I'm just sort of preserving certain areas of color in that I, that I don't want to lose in the picture. So there's kind of a method to my, to my madness here about why I'm doing one thing or another. Little cad red. This is not this is a this is not so much a painting where you use a fur brush. This is more of an impressionistic stylized painting of a dog, but it's still a dog and um see I didn't want to go up that far with that, but that's all right. Um we didn't do that. So um I hope everybody had a nice holiday. That I was reading on Facebook uh, t today about one of our artists, really good artists, by the way, uh, if, you, if you're listening, she's a really excellent artist, and one of her kind friends, uh, and you wonder if these aren't frenemies rather than friends, made the comment, her paintings were okay, but she really should be doing her own artwork with her own references. And I want to point something out that you may not have considered. YouTube has changed how people learn to paint big time. The average person never would get, you know, I think about my students and they're painting at the level they're painting it. With personal art coaching and our step-by-step -step videos, they're painting at levels that would take them 10 or 15 years to get to. I kid you not. Learning to paint before YouTube, um, very few people were able to do it. There's a reason why we have art museums with paintings in them, because it's darn hard. But, you know, when you can watch somebody paint and they can explain what they're doing, you can learn it. And we've taken the learning curve. So the idea that, you know, so the average person now sees their friends coming back from maybe a painting party or, you know, coming back from somewhere and they're, they're painting. And they see that and um, they somehow have the, mis the misunderstanding, it's an absolute misunderstanding that... Um, that painting is just something any, any fool can do in a matter of time and just go get your own photographs and all of that. Well, you know, that's like being an author. Most people can write a letter, but we're still talking about Shakespeare and Tolstoy. And even people that make their living. You know, I remember years ago, 
I used to read a lot of ro romance novels in my probably late 20s, early 30s. I used to really like the Harlequin novels. And I thought, I can write these. That's not that easy, okay? And uh, people take writing courses to learn how to write. So the idea that this woman should suggest to her that somehow that she had missed the boat by not, um, by not doing her own uh, photographs because that's a whole, that's painting design that's light and dark. That's a, that, that's a whole other study. study. And the fact that, she, that I think the fact that if you, could, if you could follow what I'm doing today and get close to this dog, with, without a tutorial like this and without knowing how to paint, you know, uh, I, I just, I've just, I hate ignorant people that say mean things to others in the eyes of being friendly. Well, if you just did this, right? Well, you know what? Um, go pound sand. Just really, I was just, I, what was the expression? Go shuffle off to Buffalo? Shuffle off to Buffalo. Shuffle off to Buffalo. That's, that's how I saw this. Well, how are you supposed to learn to paint without painting something that's already been painted? I mean, you, it's, yeah, that's how all masters learn to paint. Everybody does. Everybody. Well, it wasn't done in this country. That's the problem. In this country, if you copied somebody else, you were you know you weren't allowed to do it. You were allowed to read Shakespeare, and that you studied all the other stuff, right? But somehow, if you copied somebody else, you were wrong. Okay. And um, this is just nonsense. You, you have to have so many painting hours. And um, you just, you can watch all day long, but you actually have to get off your butt and do it, okay? And, <laughs> and you actually have, and the more you paint, the most, my most successful artists that send me their art, their painting for their art for personal art coaching. My most successful ones um, paint all the time. They just do. They just paint all the time. This is some burnt uh, um, burnt umber and paints gray. And kind of a mixture, but half and half. They paint all the time. Here's a comment. What? Oh, that's okay, Ginger. A friend of mine told me that I have to paint a thing 100, 100 times before it becomes mine. He's not invited to dinner anymore. <laughs> no, I wouldn't invite him to dinner either. <laughs> Screw that person. I'm sorry. That is just, that is just mean. And, uh, and, um, okay, so I don't get that. I just... I, because uh, even if even if you go from a reference, even if you you know if you do this dog, it's not going to look like Ginger's dog. No matter how hard you guys do, you can't duplicate the queen yet. A couple of you guys get really close. I will admit, a couple of times I have to look at them twice when they come in for their personal art coach, and I look at them, I go, "Is that yours?" She goes, "No." And I go, "Huh? You got some competition." So some of you guys are really learning a lot in the personal art coaching. I tell you, that is the difference in night and day. You send your painting in. I mean, right now, you could send this painting in right where it is right now, where Ginger is, and say, am I going the right way? Does it look okay? And get guidance as you're doing it. It's just like having Ginger there in your studio, walking you through it and helping you with it before you make a big disastrous area. Hey, Queen, can you slide a little bit to the left? I can't get the butt. Thanks. Yep. Don't want to miss the tush. No, don't want to miss the tush. So, um, no, and it's just, it's just, you know, it's just mean. Um, oh, this is a good one from Kay. Why is it the people who don't paint want to tell you what's wrong with your painting? That's so true. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Ab you, you absolutely. You guys are in the park today. Absolutely. That's, that is just so true. And, um. Oh, this is a good one. Does a criticizing person play music and it all is it all original composition? The person that plays all the instruments? Come on. This is no different. Well most yeah, and even even um well guys, you guys know what I'm saying about it. That that's a good analogy with the with the um with the music. With the music. <laughs> it's an excellent analogy, honestly, with the music. Um uh, it just 
well, it's how you learn anything except that somehow they, and they're just, it's just dumb. It's just ignorant. Um, and it's a shame because that's, you know, that, that's. Well, they're missing that on life. That's and, uh, you know, you just, you know, back when the camera was first invented and artists were starting to use the camera to, to you know, to take, um, to take, you know, to paint from, they got the same kind of criticism. Do you know that? Oh, back they, when they we heard were the doing... same thing. They heard the same thing. Oh, you used a camera. Yeah, when I, when I was in photography, it was all manual. You had manual focus, manual exposure. Then they started giving you automatic exposure and then automatic focus. And so well, then you're no longer a photographer. Well, it's still the eye. It's still the person to know when to override the automatic features, how to adjust them accordingly. I mean, it's still, a, it's still an art. Yeah, so, and even just um, the reason they have photo battle. contests is it's just somebody can go to, for instance, I've had people go to Europe and I say, can I see your photos? In fact, for, before John and I were traveling. And out of a thousand photos, there might have been one that would have made a good painting. Most of the photos were just terrifically awful because people have no clue even how to take a photo yet, yet alone how to paint for one. And, um, you know, there's, there's courses in photography for that very reason. Yeah? That um, now the cell phones have um, you know made it easier for people to take pictures, and you know instead of you know having to know a lot about cameras and stuff like that, and the cell phones have been wonderful, and you can get great shots from them, and they they have all kinds of ways to make that 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 shot better. You know, which is a good thing too, and um, there's so many innovations right now that. Um, I'm just, I'm astounded at how many nice innovations that there are anymore. Uh, and, and technology just keeps changing. John and I, one of John and our, our, one of my favorite shows, not John's, but he watches it with me because he humors me, right? It's The Price of Right. The Price is Right. I just happen to like that TV show, okay? And, um... Uh, well, Where we're going with that. So the other day on the show, they had they were um, they had a, a typewriter. It was like about the size of this painting, maybe a little bigger, maybe the size of a small laptop. It was hideously ugly. It was white. It was nine hundred dollars, and all it did was act like a typewriter. It could hold how many words? Is it? And many it had words? some words it knew. Yeah, it but could, it wasn't it a could computer. Hold the words. I, it must have printed and didn't type that out. You were actually typing on a typewriter thing. It looks strange. It's very strange. Well, you know, it's just, and so I said, who uses a typewriter anymore? There's a computers. So then this Christmas, my grandson was talking to me, <laughs> Spider, who's, um, uh, he's just uh, 13. And he was explaining to me that he taped this, he typed this whole letter thing that he had. He actually owned a, an electric, some sort of antique electric typewriter. And he was so pleased with Punch with himself because he had, um, um, he was typing, typing with it. And I, of course I said nothing because I'm his grandmother and very supportive. And I'm thinking, <laughs> why would you want that? Are you crazy? <laughs> why would you want that? I don't know. Why would you want that? You know, and of course, uh. I can't say that because, I mean, obviously he wanted it. So it really didn't matter why he wanted it. He wanted it. But I was trying, but he got, you know, he was, he's into antiques. So I'm really trying to, I'm still puzzling out why anybody buy and it, uh, this other thing that, that, was, that they were offering for sale. Oh, so funny. I hey, mean, let's give a big thank you to Diane for her donation that came in through PayPal. Thank you, Miss Diane. Thank you very much. That is so nice. You can't know, you guys. That makes such a nice difference, and we appreciate it so much. We absolutely do. And, um, and we did have a super chat come in here from The Bug earlier. But the Jenny Bug, huh? The roll. Remember The Bug from the... Uh, from the um, um, art retreat. Oh, okay. That's the bug. All I right, thank bug. you. So, uh, the bug from the art retreat. Yeah. Okay, so uh, anyhow, that's, um, 
it's just interesting to me. You know, t technology changes. I'm, I'm, t t talk I'm changing subjects on you guys. I'm adding yeah, a little gray that. hair around his muzzle. And, um, and I, I don't want to try to add white yet because you see this is too wet. But I have got, I'm, I still keep, I'm just, I just keep um, uh, doing uh, color, color, color things. This is what I'm doing. We're just doing color stuff, right? A little bit of gray, a little bit of uh, raw sienna. Okay. We're just layering on kind of, I guess I would call this an underpainting of colors. Okay. And again, you want to make sure that you get the shapes and do, do not lose your outline. And there's enough dog here where um, we're in good shape. And I can do the same over here on the other side. He's slowly coming together. So we just, there's a lot of colors on this and it's just, if you just take your time, think of it like a puzzle, kind of, you know. You don't want to um, have like black lines between the toes. You want to try, try to, some of the mistakes, you know, that are made are that people outline. And you don't want to do that. Um, you don't big harsh lines here, but you do want to um, see I'm coming over here on the foot. You want to just be careful that you're not just outlining. So start with a color and then add another color on top of it, like on the pads of his feet here. I'm just going to start with a color. And I want to keep those shapes, so then I'll just add a color there, right? And then I'll go back to some white and raw sienna, because that's a very nice, that's almost an off-white. That could be like an um, a, um, antique white, really. That's my first layer here on his face. And you'll notice how I'm just very carefully keeping the, sl the shape. So I want to thank everybody that's um, been watching us this year and subscribing to the channel and um, and being so you all have been so supportive and helps us scholarship people and helped us um, keep the studio running so that we can scholarship somebody and um, sometimes your donations may go to a new camera or something but then we can still scholarship somebody to the um, to our uh, chaos, to our chaos that we've got going in here as an art studio, all of that, um, all of that takes time, and um, so we appreciate you guys very much for everybody that's been doing that. Appreciate our mods for um, being here and uh, and, and keeping. Um, Yeah, but it's, uh, you know, just just encourage you guys. You know, a lot of times what people say, well, what do your mods do? What our mods do is... Um, everything. Everything. And, <laughs> and not only do they um, run the, a Facebook club, <clears throat> but they... Um, somebody has a question there. Johnny on the spot kind of... No pun intended, John. Hey, I was going to say, wait a minute. Uh, getting, the, um, getting the information that people ask for. Right? I mean, it's very interesting. Now we're just getting a little red here. Um, it's very interesting that um, there's just so much that goes into um, putting on one of these shows. When John and I first started... Uh, um, the good old days. Good old days. We started off with a $350 camera. And um, uh, 
let's see, like a $500 computer and that somebody had bought for us, for me. John was in Michigan. So in one of these story time things that we're doing, we'll have to um, tell you the story. Some of you don't know it, the story of how John and I became, you know, got together and became a company, you know, and how that all happened. Hey, let's uh, give Jules, wait a minute. Oh, no, I have to copy and paste it again. Can't Jules? Get Jules to thank you. No, not yet. Got to do it. Got to do it when I do it. Okay. It got removed. There we go. Okay, a truckload of thanks goes to Jewel for her donation that comes in through Zelle. Zell. And, and like th Zelle. thank you very much. And you guys may notice that I'm wearing, John and I are wearing the t-shirts. John is wearing the tractor t-shirt today, and I'm wearing the artist t-shirt that uh, we opened those um, last week with the Christmas you? cards. If you missed that, it's under the st story time. We opened the Christmas cards. If you were one of the ones that sent us a Christmas card, those were opened on air um, uh, a couple days ago under, what was the story time on that one? Um, random, random thoughts. Random, yeah. Random, random thoughts. ramblings. Random, random ramblings is when we opened the, um, uh, we we opened the, 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 the gifties and, the and, um, and gifties. So we got cookies and all kinds of neat stuff and we want to thank everybody very much for that and um, gonna get some I always look and say where else can I put that color you guys see me do that all the time all the time Right, and then sometimes I can do another layer of somewhere, and uh, so I guess we can fill this one in now. See, we're gradually getting this dog painted. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, it's just um, it's interesting how you're painting them. Yeah, I know. Just <laughs> now, if you have a, a big blob here, of paint there, like that, this is what go. people do. They just leave the blob on, wipe the brush off. You don't need. You want to have just the right of paint, amount of paint on. And you don't want to, you know. You don't you, want a blob. You don't want any blobs. No blob. You got to be no blob blobs. Free. It's a blob-free zone. When I change colors, I always um, wipe my brush off. I'm changing colors. And I want something real dark right there, but. Okay, and uh, this, this is very entertaining for me. I have no idea how long this is going to take. Hope everybody's having a nice holiday. And uh, we're, what I can say, what, regardless of what you're celebrating today. Um, See, it just just takes time. Yes and yes. See that big blob of paint? That's does nobody any good. If you scoop up a big blob of paint like that, you just ask you don't, for you trouble. Don't, you don't want to do that. Uh, let's give Stephanie a thank you very much for her donation that came in through PayPal. And she has a ticket or two in the old fishbowl. Yes and yes. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Stephanie, Stephanie. Um, one lady wrote me um, after the show uh, a couple days ago, after the rambling show, right? The one where we... we were where, what, what did we paint on the rambling show? Mm, it was a good painting. What was that? Uh, it was a good painting. It was, wasn't it? wonder what it was. <laughs> what did we paint? Let me see if I can find it. But go ahead with the story. Anyway, so she, this is when we were opening the Christmas cards, okay? And she, she wrote and said that, um, um, that she had been very ill uh, you know, and trying to get out this Christmas card to me. 
and she just wanted to make sure I got one because I, you know, I'm sorry, I, I flagrantly whined about not having Christmas card. <laughs> I know I did, and that only my insurance person would ever send me one. This is how bleak life was at my house, uh, you know. Uh, anyway, so I got all these beautiful Christmas cards and opened on the uh, opened them on the air. I was very appreciative of that. And she, um, this is burnt umber in case anybody wanted to know what the next layer of color is. And um, she said she wished that she had um, written something more personal. But my God, but you know, she had been sick. Man, she sent me a card, sick, and she sent a card. You know, um, we appreciate it. You know, gosh, you know, we really appreciate it. And what you guys do and, and the comments when you just, even when you after the show and you stop and make a comment, that means the world. It really does. What we were it just, was, it just, that, that just, was part one of the Bayou gas station. Oh yeah, the, yeah, the part one of the body of the gas station. Um, I'll tell you one thing about it. When we're doing these um, paintings, you know, some of you may not know, but for the, um, um, for our, um, membership drive this year for the Academy, we've never done anything like this before, and I figured maybe 10, 12 people would take me up on it, right? We said, look, if you sign up between November and December and renew your membership or, or activate, you know, activate a new one, um, you can have, you can, you can get, besides a great deal on the membership, you can also um, have a, uh, of, 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 of an original painting, non-tutorial, you know, but original painting, and I'm going to do them as I do them, right? Just something uh, that, you know, really way cool, right? And um, I want a little phthalo green here for the blanket. So anyway, um, we have been, I've been having a blast coming up with things to paint. John will tell you, he, we, we spent, while we were waiting for the dishwasher guy to come. <laughs> that's another story. Um, yeah, that's, and I have an update on that too. And I only am telling you, okay, and it's important you understand why I'm doing the update on the dishwasher. <laughs> um, to, to just do a quick catch up. Not catch up, but catch up, right? C A T. Yeah. John and I, I wonder what's happened to my rags here. Let me get a new one. All right. John and I, um, uh, ran, you know, was, John was starting to run the dishwasher the other day and, and it wouldn't start. And um, it did nothing. It did nothing. And of course, it was the dishwasher was 15 years old. We looked it up. And it, it, it had gone a long time. So, you know, not complaining, it wouldn't start. So we, we said, okay, that's just the way it is. So we, quick, um, uh, you know, looked online and, uh, you know, and ordered another one. So the, we were waiting. So we didn't do a live show uh, when the, um, uh, the dishwasher, um, we do a live show then, you know, that, that day because they, they said, well, 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 it'll be delivered between. Um, they give you a, they give four you a hour window. 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 Two and to I'm, six. Two to six. So we're just, so I've been crazily designing paintings. Well, because I had to sit there, we had to sit in the living room where our desk is, our work desk. And um, so, you know, so John and I, John and I, you know, we don't, we don't waste time. If we're sitting somewhere, we're working. When we go on cruises, we're working. People say, you're on vacation. Why are you working? My darling, we, <laughs> we can't afford to take a vacation. Nobody takes a vacation. We go places and get inspired to paint things, and we're lucky enough to see some stuff once in a while. But we're not, I promise you, we're not taking any vacations. So anyway, we were sitting down there waiting for that thing, and I have come up with some of the neatest. I can't wait to paint, and so many of you responded to this. Um, that I had to come up with a lot of ideas for paintings. So, and so this, I mean, it's way cool. And you're going to be, we're going to be doing this all next week. Yeah, John, mostly. Doing what? 
the painting, uh, painting story time. Oh, we're gonna be painting for the next three months. Yeah, and, and, you know that, 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 that they're not gonna go all at once, but they're we're gonna um, we're we're, we're working on it, right? Painting until the come home. Yeah, huh? Where did that phrase come from? So, what, what did you say? Keep painting until the cows come home. Oh yeah, where did that come from? The old cows. You know, those um, those cows, right? Those cows. Okay. So did you finish the dishwasher story? So no, I didn't finish the dishwasher <laughs> story. So this is kind of important. I wouldn't tell you, but we bought this dishwasher from Best Buy because we bought Best Buy Department Store for those of you who don't live in the United States. And uh, we've had, you know, buy a bunch of stuff from them over the years and have had success and, um, with them. They, we bought a, um, we replaced our oven during COVID, but they, they wouldn't install it because, so John installed the oven and um, they delivered a refrigerator one time and they, uh, they installed that and, one. and they installed that and that was a big deal because it didn't fit because I have an older house it didn't fit couldn't get through the door no you couldn't get it through the door absolutely not right and um, so um, anyhow they um, uh, so the so we waited and waited and waited and waited did I mention that we waited and waited, waited and nobody came so finally, close to five o'clock, I said, "John, call somebody," because you know, I think, you know. So John called, and um, we're not getting the United States. Wherever we're calling, it somewhere else. And um, I don't know how you could say that. They were very English spoken. Yeah, I don't know. I just had. To, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. No. Where, whoever we called, where, where, wherever, we, wherever ended we were up. in the world that we got that called, <laughs> right? Wherever we called. Um, the the guy on the phone said, "Oh no. Your dishwasher had the lady was there, came to your door and knocked and um and nobody, nobody was home. Nobody answered the door, so they had to leave." And we said, well, "Wait a minute. We were home." Because I mean, the front door is like 10 feet from our, my desk, right? I mean, we would have heard it, right? And he goes, oh, "Well, and then he asks us as he describes my front front door." And then, which anybody could do, doing Google or anything, says they came. And so we're going, well, I'm telling you, they didn't come. He says, so your order's been canceled and like that. But maybe, had. did he kind of say it was canceled or not, John? No, it wasn't canceled. You're, you have to reschedule after the ticket fully closes at 6 Yeah, you had to wait till 6 and then you could reschedule if they didn't you come. You could reschedule for the next day. This was Tuesday. They said you can reschedule it for next Wednesday. Day. So, so we... Um, um, we reschedule, and for the, you know, for for Thursday, for they couldn't come till Friday. So because nobody came, nobody came that day, and but the second time that first day that they were supposed to come, we called another person. We we called back again. I said, "Call them back, John. This just can't be right." And um, this is this is raw sienna and white, by the way. If you're wondering what colors I'm using here. A little bit of raw umber, raw sienna. And this paint I am putting on thick, in case anybody wants to know. A uh, little bit of yellow oxide, a little bit of orange, macad red, and white. So anyway, this other lady says, so she says, oh no, we don't show, the, our records don't show that anybody came. Okay, now I'm going thin again. Uh, we don't show that anybody came, but... Um, what well, the other guy told us? The, the other guy told me to come. She says, no, I don't see where anybody's came. Just hang tight, they'll come. And I said, are you sure? Can we talk to a supervisor? Oh, no. Trust me, somebody's coming. It's, it's, so, of course, nobody did come, and I don't know who we're trusting in this group outfit. <laughs> Pretty much feels like nobody was too trustworthy in that group. Okay, so that has to dry before I can do anything else to that. So um, anyway, so then comes Friday, and we have the appointment. And again, we didn't get to do any painting with you guys because um, we were waiting. Because we were waiting, so we're downstairs, you know, waiting for all this. And um, nobody, you know, it's five, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, and I'm busy designing paintings. And um, 
4 o'clock comes and gone, 5 o'clock comes and goes, and then it's 10 to 6 before we get a call from somebody who says, um, um, I'm coming, uh, I'll be there in 15 minutes. Well, 30 minutes later, he did come. With his <laughs> idea of 15 in mind, it's slightly different, but it's all right. Probably, it's hard to, he did it's hard show to, up. He, got a, he showed up, and he, who, it's hard to gauge traffic, right? It's, Christmas week, right? Weekend, okay? Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, and I was feeling pretty glad that anybody came at all, right? You could see that, right? Absolutely. So, uh, the guy comes, and he, he's such a sweet man, and um, but John and I immediately liked him, didn't we? Yeah. We he just absolutely nice liked him. Man. And he said, said, said um, he looks at our dishwasher and he said, oh, first off, he says, you know, the dishwasher you guys bought is a little bit bigger than this one and it's an, it may not fit. First thing he said was it may not fit. And once I take it out of the box, you own it. So just so you know, it may not fit. And then he went on to tell us that there were some new regulations in, in Harris County in Texas that required that all dishwashers be plugged in, not hardwired in. And he said, is your dishwasher hardwired in or plugged in? I said, I have no idea. It's 15 years old. So when he took it out of the, you know, the, the area, when he took it out, um, the, of course it was hard, hardwired in, right? So anyhow, um, this is thick paint now, over thin, barely touching it. Um, so he said, well, and he had this little kit on top of the dishwasher. He said, I come prepared for this. He said, because um, I guess they should have told you. He said, they didn't tell you. And I said, no, nobody said anything about that. Of course, we didn't talk to a real person. We just ordered it online. Okay. But there was nothing in the online instructions that suggested that we needed to do something different. Okay. So then, um, then he says, well, I can do it um, if you want to wait and get an electrician because you have to have it plugged in, or I can do it for $125. And, well, we, do you, do you, we put it on a credit card. He says, no, I don't, we can't do credit cards. You pay me directly. And um, See, right there, that should have been a clue. Well, you pay me directly, down. yeah. Okay. And you're going, uh oh, Ginger. But you know, I mean, what? We've been waiting a long time for the dishwasher. I want the stupid dishwasher in. You know what I mean? And um, well, yeah, so anyway, fighting. so he gets out. He 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 takes it apart. And he does do the plug-in for us, which was really sweet. He got the plug-in for us, and um, um, it did fit. And it fit. And the dishwasher. Uh, he thought the thought it, the reason he thought it wouldn't fit was there was a gas. We have a gas a cooktop, and there was a gas pipe back there, for the you know to, to for the uh, for the uh, for the cooktop. That comes in pretty. And then and he thought that the, there wasn't room for the, um, there wouldn't be room. For that. Um, for the dishwasher slide all the, the way back yeah, in. Yeah, he there. just there just wouldn't be room. So. Um, um, anyhow, um, but we were really lucky, and uh, he not only you know was able to effortlessly install that um, that pluggy thing, but um, oh, let's see, I'm just gotta blow my eyes up here so I can see what I'm painting here. Hang on a second, my. Um, and the dishwasher fit perfectly. So John and I were extremely happy. We had paid him the, uh, the $125, okay? Extremely, and I gotta tell you, we were extremely happy to do it, okay? So then I got to thinking, I was just talking to one of my friends that, you know, guys, you guys know her, um, Becky Sermon, she's one of our moderators. I was talking to Becky, and I just, I was just, just yesterday, I said, Becky, by the, by the way, um, do you remember 
um, anything about um, is your, when did you get your dishwasher? He says, well, after the flood, we had one put in, and it was, um, um, uh, she said it was uh, hardwired in. I said, okay, so, but she doesn't live in Harris County either. She lives in Texas, not far from me, but, you know, as the crow flies, but um, still. Um, so, um, Anyway, so then I went, and here's the, here's the thing. In spite of all, it, there is a AI, free AI out there for all of you, in the, on, and it's called um, Claude, Claude.com, Claude, uh, okay? Don't and Claude know. is a free AI, artificial Don't intelligence. Know. And Claude is a wealth of information. Absolutely, just about any subject you want to know, Claude knows. So I just had this sinking feeling that we'd been lied to, okay? And um, you notice I'm having to go over with all the yellows again, right? And all the colors, you see that? We did the underpainting on this stuff and notice how I'm having to layer on these colors. They just don't go on all at once here. So um, anyway, I said, what are the regulations for Harris County, Texas? And, um, and Oh, the other thing, he says that our dishwasher only came with the plug. Remember that? He said that too. And then he told us, he says, it's a good thing um, I'm here because that lady that missed the appointment could not have, she said, would not have. Um, well, she would have done, had nothing to do with electric because of the pipe in the back. As soon as she saw the pipe in the back, she would have quit. She would have attempted it. Yeah. So anyhow, um, it turns out from, from my research there on um, uh, uh, on Google, our, our Claude rather, that um, our dishwasher comes both ways with a, um, it comes with a plug or you can hand hardwire and you have the option to do either one. And that there was no law in Harris County about having to have them hardwired. Or, 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 or plugged in. I think that was that these were all optional things, right? And, um, and, and even though the Claude did say it was probably better to have one more convenient to have a plug in if somebody had to make a repair, they could, um, um, that would be a little bit easier to do if they um, had. Um, If you had the, um, so you keep adding lighter colors, keep going over it. And start with the darker colors first, then you add the light. You guys seeing that? So basically, this nice young ma man, who isn't really young, but you know, I guess it's all relative, how young or old somebody looks. Um, <laughs> he was 40. He, he, you know, he's in his 40s, but anyway, and I, John and I liked him immensely, okay? He absolutely lied to us about the plug. He just did. And that's kind of off-putting, you know what I mean, you guys? Don't you think oh, that, that somebody would just sit there and lie to you like that? And I, I, we, if he'd have told us up front, that he could put a plug in for us. It wasn't through the company. And, you know, and we didn't have to do it, but he could do it. And if he had told us that up front, we would have done it. For sure, wouldn't we, John? Yes. Absolutely, we would have done it. Yeah, I prefer having the plug. Because that, that seemed like a re really good thing to do. He didn't need to lie, right? He just didn't need to lie to us about that. And... Um, the fact that he did lie is um, um, kind of crummy, don't you guys think? Well, basically, we were lied to twice from Best Buy. Yeah, from so Best Buy. Best Buy has basically been removed from our go-to place to purchase things. So we probably won't buy anything else from them because of that. 
I'm using some just flow black paint for the pupil. And some of the highlights around the eye. In a moment or two, we'll show you some of the paintings we've been working on for our yeah, yearly Yeah, so we'll show you some of the things we've been doing. I want to do, yeah, I want to do that. Show you some of the things that we've, some of we've been able to, cool. to do. Okay. And um, now I've got some brown on my brush, burnt sienna. And let's come back over here to the other eye, and I'll let these dry before I try to do anything else. They're looking good now. They got some good eyes in there. And uh, that's, the brush I'm using is um, is one of these um, little mo uh, model brushes, and I've got two sets. One that apparently a new one that we've got, and um, I'm not using one of the new ones. I'm using one of the old ones. I actually like them both, so we have both for detail work like this. And I'm resting my arm on this piece of wood right here, so I'm up high enough so I can hold my hand steady, steady, and I can um, I can do the um, I can get the details, right? So. This is just the first step in doing the eyes. The eyes have lots of layers before they are done. Oh, they do. And uh, do the same thing with the nose here in a minute. All right, so let me just uh, stop a minute and I'll put that away and I'm gonna take a minute and show you some of the paintings that some very, uh, I think some people are gonna be very, very happy to get as, because um, nobody really knows what they're getting. If, if somebody well, is signed do. up and they see something, they can put a dibs on it, right? They can do, try to do a dibby. You can do a dibby. Now some of these have been, you know, this is, that's why I told you to write on the painting. One of those has been dibbed already. Uh, this to be aware of your screen in front of you. Okay, like this. Here's just a few. These are the six by eights. Okay, and you may have seen. Yeah, the bottom this, one's been divvied. The bottom one you may have seen, and that was in our newsletter. But I want you've seen those, but wait till you see some of the new ones that no one's seen. So let me show you this. Um, we thought some people might really enjoy a tropical painting. So uh, not everybody lives in cold climates and so forth. So we've got Hawaii. And then one of my, um, see I had some others. So what else have I done, John, that we haven't shown? Well, I have lost everything. I where's have the rabbit? He should be in there. He, where's he the, the, where's the bunny? I don't know. The bunny was I wanted to show there. ones that people hadn't seen. Oh, you have them framed. Where's the framed ones? John will get them. Here's another little six by eight. So even the six by eights take a long time. Take probably take me an hour and a half, two hours to do them. Oh. And um, our, and we think that they're um, they're they're absolutely. So we do the small ones. We go up to a twelve by sixteen. Um, Watch your puppy dog over there. Let's just move the dog for a second. Uh, Here's our rabbit. This was a nine, nine by 12. Here's our bunny rabbit. And you see, we don't come with frames, but there's our, our snow hair. That's one that uh, will be going to somebody. It's not been claimed yet. What size is that, nine by, nine by 12? Yes. And then here's a nine by 12 Hawaiian waterfall and, 
in, um, in Hutt. So we've got some really, I think, some neat paintings, okay, that are that will be given to um, those people who have, you know, done their renewed their annual membership or signed up for an annual membership in our academy as a red member or a purple member, and the size of the painting depends on on uh, the color of the, the membership. The color of the membership, and if it's one year, two years, one or year three. or two, three years, okay. One, two, or three. One, two, or three. So that's just some of the things we've been doing. Um, great fun, right? Um, yes and yes. Yeah, it's, it's been very fun for me because I've been doing all kinds of... Um, I had a wild hair. <laughs> so I did a wild hair. When you're doing dog's eyes, you always want to have a little bit of light, even cats, a little bit of light under the bottom like that. You want to make sure you have that. And uh, this is a little bit darker. This we don't want this quite this dark. This is in shadow here, it's not real light. Okay. Top of his lid's a little lighter. Let's see. I want to make sure I get this a second coat of paint, but I want to make sure that this is round. Let's come on down to his nose. Dogs and noses, that's the other thing people seem to get wrong when they're painting dogs, is they don't get the shape of the nose right. And you gotta think of a little heart-shaped box. And it's always gonna be lighter on top of the nose than it is on the side of the nose. You know, on the, it's gonna be the light, not the height, because remember, it's sticking up, so the lightest part of the nose is, um, going to be on top. So there should be something very light up there. And then you can have some light on the side, you know, dark on the sides. So getting the nose right is that was one of the things that one of the mistakes that um, that I see made. Is they don't quite get the nose right. And these all, you know, all this takes takes a little time. But um, and generally on animal eyes, it's usually darker. If this was a clock and this was 12 o'clock and that's three, three o'clock on, that's a little darker right there, okay? D depending on where you put the highlight, a great deal will depend on, um, on um, the expression of the animal. So I mean that's that can be can make a difference, okay? So any questions, John? Well, Michelle wanted the um, bunny, but that's a nine by twelve, and she's getting a twelve by sixteen. I said, well, we have another bunny design that we could possibly do for her if she wants a bunny. Okay. Well, that's good to know, right? Well, I think so.
Is it the last week to sign up for that particular offer? Yeah, this, it, it ends, the, it ends never, the end. It will be repeated again. Eve, right? We were a glutton for punishment this time. Yeah, I really didn't, th uh, you know, and I'm not complaining. I just didn't think that that many people would do it, you know? <laughs> Uh, we're happy we that know. they did, Little but did I just know. really thought, I thought, you know, we'd probably have a few people take advantage of it. And, um, and we're certainly glad people did. So sometimes I'm just trying to get just the color. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I want a dark brown under here. I want a dark red. And so it takes a few layers to do that. And um, maybe right under here I want something lighter. A little bit lighter over the top here. Horses and dogs, usually the top of the eye, it's usually a little lighter. Um, just is. Usually lighter on top. But I try to, you know, I don't try to put the highlights um, first. I want to have the, you know, the other stuff, you know, the other layers of paint. And that's the trick. It's just, you don't do it in all one swell sw swoop. Uh, you just, it just isn't possible. So this is like yellow oxide and white. Or maybe raw sienna and white. Let's see. Yeah, let's put a little yellow with that. Kind of a light, almost a gold color on top of his head here. Um, but he started to get a little personality, you see that? Now, you'd think he would be done. He's not done. And You're not done with And acrylics either. dry darker. So, um, you can't, um, see we had the first layer on there, but now we get the second. And you always have to ask yourself when you're doing dogs, what's the color underneath the color underneath the color? And that's, the trick is being able to see it. Because there is a color, trust me. There's a color underneath all of it. And it's important that you, you know, you got to see it. And you kind of see how we're, um, you know, layering this on here now. And the paint gets thicker as we go on up. Now I'm just putting in colors. So he's got pads of his feet, and then he's got these cute little toenails that are up here. There's one right there. He's got these little toenails. keep working on the feet as they dry we'll just keep we'll just keep moving around just keep one of the things I like to, I just keep moving around the dog does it make sense and I need something very dark on this side of his face right here I'm not gonna I'm gonna just do a shadow and it's gonna come around his his cheek like this and then come out that way
One thing I know about these dogs is they're very noisy. My brother had a beagle when he was younger. Seems to me that they make a lot of, do, do, have you, that your experience, John, is they, they kind of bark a lot and make yeah. a lot of noise. Yeah, they're, they're a noisy dog. They are, right? Not, not just my imagination? No, they, they're a talker. They have a lot to say. Yeah, they're, well, they're, I thought it's so. It's a higher pitch bark, too. We always had big dogs. You didn't have anything small like this, right? Mm-mm. Okay. Our guys weighed in at 70 pounds and up. All right. So now moving on to the... Just, just keep moving up around and about, right? It's kind of fun. I don't know. To, to me, this is fun. I hope you guys are having fun, you know, uh, and maybe picking up a few tips on how to do this. Because it's all about, you know, layering the colors. In this type of painting, we're not doing, we're not doing um, any kind of um, uh, fur st stuff, okay? A lot of times you'll, you'll see people and they'll do fur. And now we're just kind of lightening up the the nose here. And uh, this is just kind of going into white. And then as I come up on up here, up, up, up on his head, up here like this, I'll go outside the lines a little bit that I have. That's the only kind of way I, I might it might be suggested that I'm painting fur, okay? And uh, <clears throat> so as I keep, keep you know, uh, a little bit of shadow in here like that. And then as we come down under his nose here like this, there's a little bit of a shadow. It kind of has some blue in it. This is where the arty stuff comes in you know what I mean? This is where you don't, you're not playing with the photograph in that sense. Does that make sense? You're just, um, layering the colors and making sure that you've got a little white here on the bottom, his face like that, so that you can kind of see it under his nose. And on top of his nose, he's got a little bit of a white highlight. Just dry brushed across. Okay. Okay. Um, and so we're sort of indicating um, uh, whiskers and stuff by just doing this, coming around like that. And I want some sort of gray-blue color right here next to his nose. Kind of a light blue color, maybe a little bit on top right there. So as you layer, just put a little bit of shadow right there. As you layer the colors on, on, you start to get the dog. And if you would practice this style and then maybe try it on your own dog or a dog that you know, um, Try to see all the colors, that because there's tons there. You know, trying to see all the colors, and um, I mean, as you can see, his, he's he's starting to take shape, right? Wouldn't you say, John? Yes. And it doesn't happen qu quickly, but it will happen. Let's see, I think some cad yellow light would be a good color to have. Don't back. need a lot, You're huh? You're doing a good job.
want something a little brighter under there. And sometimes you just have to layer the colors until they, so they sort of click on you. And this gets a little bit more dark brown here like that. Coming in here. Okay, we want to give Carol a big thank you for her donation that came in through PayPal, and she's got a couple of tickets in the old fishbowl. Thank you very much, Carol. It's extremely nice, and appreciate it very much. I haven't put any highlights in his eyes yet. I'm still, still, um, still messing with this. This is where nothing is ever just black. Or Payne's gray is just gonna just change the highlight a little bit. Okay. But as I, I, one of my favorite things, people always ask, what do you like to paint? I love painting animals. I absolutely love painting animals. You also like to paint water. You like to paint I, I like flowers. oceans and <laughs> water and. <laughs> Well, I, I, yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to think the things you don't like to paint. Not you know, too many. Going to put this on with a little bit of texture. This is kind of thick here, like that. You see how the, do we keep building up the white? Dark to light in, in acrylics. Yeah, just, it just, just, there's a reason why. Then I said, where else can I add? No, I need a little bit of light right above his eye right there. This has had a chance to dry, so I just tap it in there. Just on one side of the brush. And then we've got it right here, too. Okay. So where your lights and darks are make a difference. The light part of his paw right here, bring that color down. Think of this like a puzzle. That would be a good way to explain it, wouldn't it, John? Absolutely, especially the way you painted it. Yeah. You did it in a puzzle fashion. So, that, that, yeah, to me that would be a good, a good way to, to explain it. If it was a puzzle, how would you paint it? So, um, and again, it just depends on the time you you have, and just take you know if you, if you don't have time to finish it, then then wait another day and do it. Because I can see where the paint, the acrylics are drying darker, and I can see where I need the light highlights. See, and. Uh, that dried a little darker on me, and I know I need this to be lighter right in here. So I guess the uh, Achilles heel to you would be tractors. Seems yeah, well, I just, you know, I, I guess what it is, John, is I have to have an interest in something I'm painting. How can you I'm, not have an interest in tractors? I know, it's hard to imagine, isn't it? But I, I have to have an interest before you can, I feel engaged. I like, uh, I'll just tell you what. I mean, we should have discussed this before uh, the happy nuptials happened. You know what I'm saying? You think so? Tractors, I mean. You get to change your mind now. You're an owner. <laughs> as they say in the car no biz. Refunds here. As they say in the car biz, you're an owner. Okay. So.
Okay, so let's see if we can't figure out here. I think I'm going to take a pen and uh, a Posca pen, or maybe the Artistos, and maybe just... What are the thousand pins you have? Well, the thousand pins I have, right? Just while I'm doing it, right? Well, but one of the things I wanted to do is like right here, I wanted to just draw in these um, Here's the pads coming around like this. I just wanted to, and then there's a, there's a uh, claw, like a toenail, and then here, like that. So I wanted to see where that was, so I didn't, um, sometimes it's easy to kind of lose the picture. Does that make sense? This comes down, it's a heart shape, so I want to make sure that I have not um, lost the shape of this paw in my um, when I as I paint it. Okay, so I got one, just two, three like that, and then I'm gonna I want something white around his nose, just a little bit right there. Okay. It's small stuff. But as long as I'm playing, right, you can appreciate this. And see, you know, I'm not quite, it's got a little while. This is going to um, take a little bit. I hope you guys are okay with that. This is going to, you know, John said that I thought this might be, might make a long video. And, John insisted that you all felt that would think that was okay anyway. So I'm trusting that you do. Because even though I know that I look like I might be done. You're not. I'd not be done. Let's probably have to get a smaller brush for this, but I don't mind doing the the bigger um, um, patterns with this. And there is a very tiny dark line between this paw. You know how to make a tiny dark line? You put the paint on the brush and wipe it all off and then pinch it and then pick up the paint again and using just the tip. Or you could use a pen. There, like that, see? How you do a tiny, and I want that tiny dark line right there too. And I want a little bit of this color right there of the white little shadow. Okay. So then I'm going to switch to a smaller brush to do the details on the paws. Is anybody having any conversation going here, John? Or is it just me, or what's going on here? Well, you're basically just talking among the crickets, you and the crickets. Really? No. Is that how it's working here? So got 130 people hanging in there with you. Well, that's nice. I think this has to be kind of white, and then we... You have to be sort of careful when you put the, your, your detail brushes in water in between whatever it is you're doing. You've got to make sure you're pinching off the extra water so you don't get water droplets on your picture. Okay. Like there's a water droplet right there from that brush. And I know these things, and I still do it, so it's just darn one of those things, right? It just kind of curves around here like this. Top of this little little claw. So rather than use the hair dryer, what I've been doing is just sort of jumping around the picture. 
um, so I can do that. And just keep keep layering it. But still, you're getting the sense, aren't you, that that you get a feeling about this dog now, right? Yeah. I'm going to take a little bit of the white and blue. Here's another trick for painting dogs. When you're doing a highlight, don't do white, do blue. Um, that reflects the sky. Just a small little piece of trivia. You know, well, it's actually fairly, fairly um, important. Now I'm going to play a little bit with the, with the um, um, orange and um, uh, turquoise are are uh, complements. So I've definitely got some turquoise somewhere in this picture where the blanket is. It's not all turquoise, but I definitely have some because, okay, let me just back that out. So I'm going to, so as I do the layers on the background, I want to make sure that I have some of that color. So if you want to make a turquoise, if you do phthalo green and white and, and um, phthalo, um, uh, blue, you can get a pretty nice turquoise blue color. And uh, the lightest part of the blanket is up here on the top. Okay. And drifting over here like that. This is the lightest part of this. Sometimes if you get too much paint, you can just kind of smudge it around. This is one where we're not being a lot of this. This is loose the way those of you who did the portrait we had of the of the jazz player and the artist, those of you who did that painting, this is in the same style. Maybe not as dramatic with the colors, but it's in the same uh, style of uh, painting. Similar. I'm going to say it's not similar. quite not strong. The, it's not total similar, but it's similar. It's sort of yeah. a, it's sort of a, but it's, it's. It's a very strong impressionistic. Very strong but impressionistic. You know, so I've got a dark corner there, which is good. And I know that I want something dark under the paws, but now this is, this is dried, so I can put a, can take a little bit of the dark color here and, um, Let's see where it's right there where the other nail is. Okay, can do that. Come up here with this. I always ask where can I do that color, and right up here where this nail is, and um, okay. So under this paw, you know, so you see all this dark blue. <clears throat> I just put that there so that I would have. Um, I, I wouldn't lose the paw, the shape of the paw, but I don't necessarily want that there anymore. So I want sort of a green-blue color here, right in here. Maybe that's a little bit wider than that. Let's put a little raw umber with that. That'll tone that down. Green-blue, kind of a, almost a sea green is what the color I want. That's what it sounds like you're going for. Yeah, like a sea green color. And then I've got the dark blue there. And then I've got white paint. I'm going to come under here like this and thick paint. And see how I'm, see how I'm throwing in that color? And then I'm going to come this way sideways. And again, thick paint up in here. Everything's at an angle here coming on down. And right next to this one 
is that fun light blue color again. Everything's at an angle going that way. Brush direction makes such a difference. Um, there's a little of that cerulean blue. So now we've got kind of a nice soft, it's, it's interesting, all these colors that are in this blanket, right? And oh, well, might have a lot of colors throughout the whole painting, really. Well, there are, right? And so like, for instance, it's very dark right around his paw. Then I want a little bit of blue here. That's, it's dark, but not as dark. Something darker here. A little bit of blues, dark blues, up in here like this. So again, it's, it's one of the things, what, if you can darken the corners in your paintings, that forces the eye in towards your, it's a kind of a neat design trick. You can do that, let's see. I think this was the zinc white up here. Put it somewhere. Do you remember where I put the zinc white? I don't remember. I'll put it up here so I don't get it confused. All right, zinc white is your transparent white, as you guys know. I know you know that. We know that. So <clears throat> as I put the, the transparent white here, it will lighten it without being so drastic. Okay, if, as opposed to, um, and I can put it on fairly thickly, see? Thickly like that. And it won't, um, All right, so far so good, yeah. Now we'll go back to the titanium, because <clears throat> we now have um, this arms dry, okay? <clears throat> Gosh, okay. So I know I want some white right here on top of this arm right here like this. And um, um, that's the zinc white. That's the white up here. This might get another coat of white, right, like that. So then I said, okay, no, oh yeah, we got to go back and work up on the top up here. All right. And oh no, wait, this has got to be, don't want so much dark right in here. All right, that, yeah, that was just a little too much as they say on the prices, right? Too much. <laughs> They always want one more. Yeah, well, you know, that's the thing, see? That's the thing. Sometimes you just have to, the, the zinc white lightens something up even more. But see, all the brush strokes are going down. Then a little of this blue up in here. And we've got quite a dark line here, so we need to come up with that a little bit. So that we just, with some of this blue, I'm using the cerulean. Now see all that paint? You've got to, you've got to wipe that off. And I want, want some white up here. The top of that. All right. So now what? So I want to get into the light yellows up here. I'm going to use a different brush because that one's got blue all over it. And so if I mix that light color, it's just going to be titanium white and raw sienna. Mix that over here on this palette. Wipe the brush off and then try again. I want a little tiny bit of orange in that. Yeah. 
There we go. Remember I told you there'd be this thick layer and then the thin layer. Put a little tiny bit of raw over in it. Not much, just change it a little bit. Kind of gray it out. So I come down here like this. I tell you, I want something a little bit lighter here. So that's kind of, you know, when you're looking at that, you just, you have to be able to mix the colors. So, you know, I mean, I told you the colors I'm using, but you've got to be able to mix the colors. And one of the ways you can learn to do that is starting your, you know, doing your own color mixing journal. And I, John and I both encourage, if you haven't done a color mixing journal, we, we um, you're wasting paint. It's, it's a waste of paint. <laughs> Because you can sit there trying to mix a color and you've had the recipe sitting there, you go, oh, that's what I needed to do. I've used it several times when Ginger says she wants a certain color underpainting, and I go, well, I don't remember how to make that, so I just open up the journal and says, use this, this, and this. And I go, oh, I knew that. After I All looked. right, so we're, um, as you can see, we're, um, we're making pretty good progress on the dog, don't you think, John? Yes? Yes and yes. So. I think it's looking darn good there, lady. I need a smaller brush. Let's see if I can. That almost looks like a dog after Thanksgiving dinner. Just kind of <laughs> resting. Uh, stuffed turkey. a little tiny bit of white, like just a dot, and add, you have the light blue, then you can add just a, a dot right there like that. It's called a catch light. In the photographic world. Is that what that's called? Thank yep. you, John. There's an actual term for it. Now, we told you in the beginning of the show, this will be available for free as a green member and above. You do have to register just because of how our system works. We don't do anything with your email or anything through that system. If you want to be kept informed, you do need to sign up for the newsletter, which is from the home page of the website, acrylicpaintingwithgingercook.com or paintingwithginger.com take you to the same place. This is my third coat of paint on the top of his head. I bet it's more than three. <coughs> <coughs> we do I do that sometimes. Count the layers in one specific area. How many times you hit it? Um, this is to me what makes it so enjoyable to paint. The layers? Yeah, because it, it just comes to life. You know, if you just understand what, where, what goes where, and then just keep doing it, right? Keep tweaking and fine tuning. You do. This comes down to about three o'clock on his eye. And um, 
that's the thing that I that I try to do the most with. If you're going to be painting dog portraits, you got to focus on the eyes. Dogs' eyes are round, and um, uh, I think people forget that when they're painting them. Uh, The cad red. A little bit of cad yellow light. So when you start putting your highlights in, so they don't look uh, just all pasted in there. light on top of his head. Starting to look like a, you know, kind of a friendly dog, doesn't he, John? No? He certainly does. He looks like someone that's waiting to be asked to play. He doesn't look like a biter. You know how some dogs have a look. They have a look that looks like they'll take your head yeah. off. You no, know, when they um, opened, there's a the dog racing track in Houston about 20 years ago. Um, People, you know, they, the, the, the dogs don't race very long. I mean, that's a whole other subject to whether that's even a good thing, but they don't race very long, so people would adopt these dogs. And, you know, like this little dog is very happy to be sleeping here, right? But, um, A lot of dogs are not, you know, they, they need exercise and they need to be outside doing things. Yes, John, yes and yes? Absolutely. You know, that's just absolutely the way it is. And so they're, um, they're not happy campers if they're stuck in the house waiting for someone to take them for walkies. Okay, I think we did pretty good with the foot, footies there. Don't have to have it too perfect, just want to make sure that we have suggested it with the colors. The colors to make sure all toes are present and accounted for. Yeah. Little details. Deciding what's, what's light and what's dark. Doesn't have to be much, right? But there he is as he sits there. And, and again, what happens to the white is it just dries darker on you and you have to go back and put the white. That's what, you know, you just, you think you have it and you just don't, right? But I think we're getting very close on him. What do you think, John? I think you're darn close. I think we're close, you guys. And you know, one of the things that these videos drag out a little longer than a lot of other people do is because I just, um, if I see it, I feel like I've got to add it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. We appreciate everybody joining us this afternoon, early evening. Yeah wherever you may be in the world. 
you know, and I hope everybody had a good holiday. And um, sometimes uh, And remember that we'll be going live periodically on and off all week long, depending upon weather schedules, health, wellness, etc. Yeah, it's for just a little story time acrylic painting, acrylic painting story times. Because as we said earlier in the show, that we're doing a lot of paintings. We have to do about seventy of them for our membership drive that we had at the end of the year. It will end at the end of this next week. Well, I guess it ends Sunday. Well, I guess the first is Monday. So, yeah, it must end Sunday. So if you want to take so advantage we, of like that. Like I say, and, we'll probably never do this again. I'm pretty sure we won't. Um, so if you want, might want to take advantage of this chance to, you know, Get something that's totally, absolutely, totally unique, don't you think, John? Yes. Just unique for you. Remember, you can get a Ginger Cook original painting for signing up for a year as a red or purple member. And two or three years will get you a bigger painting. There's no extra charge for those. It's our way of saying thank you for... What's, what are the values, John, from how much to how much? It's from here to there and back again. How much are the values, what we're talking about? The 6 by 8 are valued at 360, 9 by 12 for 825, and the 12 by 16s are 1,450, and 8 by 10s are 600. So basically, you're getting a heck of a deal. Bottom line. And like she says, this will not be offered again. We're only glutton for punishment once. Just back up at my reference and think. I think I've um, kind of got it, but we'll see. I don't know. I, to me, this is a lot of fun. You know. Uh, You want to make sure that one of the things time is you don't want to have something very dark between the toes. You want to, if you want a shadow, there's a tendency, people do that with hands too, they want to do a dark line. And you don't want to, and you don't want to do that. Just, just keep, just, well, uh, let's see, do you think we've got enough, um, I think we're doing pretty well with our background. Really dry darker, but so this is my next layer on the background up here. And I didn't do a whole lot back here to like back on his back. I, I really didn't. I just we kind of just kind of kept that. Uh, didn't say a whole lot, right? Um,
if I was going to do anything back there, um, just to break up that that dark patch of see how dark it is. Everything else got a lot of layers. It's like I didn't do anything back here. Can you guys kind of see that? So I might just take like some burnt burnt sienna or burnt umber and maybe a little bit of um, there you go something like that. Just suggest still dark back there, but it's not quite. Um, black right because I know I want this to be a steady black line here on, a, on his back so with certain things that I absolutely know we have to have that are um, kind of written in stone stuff that we've got we've got to have right like right here from his muzzle here I want kind of a line like that right down here that little shadow and I might want a little bit of a darker green shadow right here right where his white muzzle is and let's play with that green right here again Maybe we talked about that maybe something green right here over that blue so you asked me how do you decide where to put the colors well, I look for good references, but also you just you've got to have to kind of look for that stuff. Just try to see where you can, uh, where you see the colors, and where and, you know, and, and and where they you know where they might be. Um, I know I want a little bit more white right on top of his nose, like that, right there, going back, and that's because it's usually the brightest on the top of his face. So I'm going to lighten that up and brighten this one up again and brighten this one up. You think it's lighter, but it isn't. It's not, it, it didn't show up lighter, so I got to do another coat. These are the things I would say when, you know, people say, what are the mistakes? I would say those are some of the mistakes people make when they're painting animals is they just don't go far enough with it, right? A little bit of blue highlight in his coat. Um, Little shadow right there. Okay, so I think I'm ready to to sign it, John. I think that um, I think that I appreciate uh, you guys. I hope you enjoyed enjoyed this because again, I, we can I could play around this forever. But I think you got the idea of how we did it, how we painted this dog, and you think the highlights are. You got to do them sometimes twice. They're not always bright enough. You got to be, and then you know when you varnish it, it will be, it will, um, uh, it will, uh, it will brighten up even more. You know, that it'll shine in his eyes and all that stuff, right? So all things are good here. I'm going to just take a black pen, I think, and. And sign it right here, John. What do you think? Ooh. Hey, do you have a frame for this real quick, John? So show people how this looks in a frame. Nine by twelve. Can you get well, me one? Of course one? I do. I've got everything. Yeah, no. I'm I mean, sure if I like sure that bright you. blue right there, just that big spot of bright blue. I think I'll tone that down. Let's bring you guys back over here, okay? Um. There you go. Let's see, where's that zinc white? Some blue. There we go. There, just tone that down. John's going to find us a little frame just so he can show you what that might look like. How little the frames are going to be? It's a 9 by 12. That's not a little frame. That's okay, well, frame. just give us a second here. We'll put that in a frame. I like to sign it after I put it in the frame because I kind of never know where. Um, just to make sure. Just to make sure. That, to me, this is a fun kind of dog portrait because it's called painting loose. In other words, you're not totally doing the details. But as you guys can see, um, 
we've got, I think we've got a, a very cute dog. And, uh, An adorable dog. And, That's Roscoe. And it wasn't, wasn't that hard to do. This is my black pen here. Uh, let's see, right, right here. Hey, we appreciate everybody joining us today on a holiday of a, interrupting your afternoon for a little painting. Well, you know, and again, the traceable for this will be on our website for everybody. It, uh, you tomorrow. just have to, you know, sign in as a, a green member, which is a free membership. Our orange memberships, of course, and above will have it. But we wanted to just for Christmas do something kind of nice like that. So everybody gets it. And everybody, everybody gets a, um, everybody gets a, um, the traceable. And I would love to know what you think about the dog. And I would appreciate very much if you would leave a comment. Um, on the video, once it's done. On been the posted. video, once it's done, right? If you do it in the chat, I don't see it. There's my red slash through the name. That means and, it's done. Uh, and it's done, you guys. So Brushes happy down. holidays. We love you guys. Thanks for all the support this year and for hanging in there with us. And, um, um, Next uh, Monday, New Year's, we'll be uh, we'll be painting something fun. So we hopefully, think we will. Hopefully, you enjoy it. Yes and yes. Yes and yes. You're still painting, boss. Well, I know, because as, as as we fade out, I'm still <laughs> as we fa fade out. Oh, I need to fade painting. out. Oh, we're gonna do a fade so we, out. We, wait, so we wait, fade out. That. I'm still I'm still touching it up, right? Where's my Because who can resist, I got right? A fade button. Do who I can fade resist? Button? Uh, a little touch-up, you know? Bye. Bye, everybody. Two hours.